If you are still watching The Flash, you need to know something. You're a victim! Mm. Here we go, CSI. This show has been falling off for years, but this year is when it decided to truly Thelma and Louisa off the cliff. We did it. We. That has always been the core problem with the show. There's no I in team, well there should be. There should be a B-A-R-R-Y. What about the people we lost? You mean the fans who ran for the hills? Yeah, you lost us. There are so many reasons, I'm just gonna just start listing them. Let's just start with the problem that's been going on for years. Number one, Barry is nerfed by Team Flash. Because of Arrow, they set up the Flash in the same way, you know, with the Star Labs team, always in Barry's ear. Guys, what do I do? Guys, what do I do? Guys, how do I put on my pants? Guys, how do I breathe? I it's so annoying, it's so frustrating, and it's made him completely useless at times. It's like, dude, it's been, well, seven seasons for us, so seven years. How many years has it been for you? You can't function alone. You can't do your job. It's like being a never-ending university student. Like, at some point, you graduate, mate, and that's what Barry has needed to do. But they won't allow him to do that. So every season, it's the same thing. I can't run fast enough. Guys, I'm not fast enough. Guys, guys. If he says guys one more time, oh, I can't stand it. So... He's not the fastest man alive. I don't want to hear that in that intro no more. He is the slowest man alive. And I'm not just talking about his legs, I'm talking about his brain too. He isn't that smart. And it's so frustrating because in the comics, Barry's pretty much a genius. He's really competent. He's great at science. But because they need Cisco and Caitlin to have function, to have use, Barry's not allowed to use his brain. You wouldn't think he was a scientist. You would think that he was a layman and that this wasn't his specialty, science. But that's what always happens. When they pull up that, you know, whiteboard, that drawing board, whatever it is to like figure out all the science things, it's always Cisco that's doing it. And you know what hurt me the most? Oh, do you know when I really knew that he was never going to use his brain? It's like, oh, it's like the, the Wizard of Bloody Oz and he's that straw guy, if I only had a brain. Like, I knew it was never going to happen when Cisco was the one who built the Flash Ring. When Barry Allen, that's his thing, when Barry Allen didn't do that himself, I knew it was all over. When they had one of the Wellses decoding Speed Force language, that guy wasn't even a speedster and they had him doing that, not Barry Allen. I knew the show was a disaster, but another thing that just added it, you know, like injury on top of insult, or is it insult on top of injury? It's insult on top of injury. Look, see, they're making me stupid, was the fact that the fans don't get it. They're so busy hating Iris that they can't see that what's destroying the show is the fact that they have all these other extra scientific characters that are stopping Barry from being smart. Because what would Cisco do if he wasn't in Star Labs being the brains? What would Caitlin do if she wasn't in Star Labs being the brains? Cisco hasn't had a job in seven seasons. Caitlin hasn't had a job in seven seasons. A oh, correction, she worked at Mercury Labs for an episode and then she got fired. And so their function is to explain the scientific stuff to Barry. And that has what has stopped him from doing anything because he always has to go to the lab. There was a time, I think it was during, it was season three and season four where we were all lab sick. We were like, oh my gosh, every scene was them. I literally felt nauseous. Whenever I would see that lab, oh, not, no, please, oh, don't show me that lab. Because all they would do was stand around that console, or leaning on that console, and talk about everything and everything. All their scenes were just them standing. Like, they only had one set. Like, this was the number one rated show on the CW. Not anymore, and understandably why. And they were always just standing on that one set. It was so terrible. I even thought at one point, Barry and Iris are probably going to get married in that Star Lab set because what else is going on? Where else are they allowed to do anything? It stifled the show. What Barry should have done is he should have just been a CSI. He goes on cases. You know how he was in the pilot? I can't believe I have to reference all the way back to them because that's the only time we saw it. Him working on things. And then him going to his own lab. Not Star Labs. His own lab. And then him potentially like building relationships with people in the CCPD. Star Lab should have stopped existing. It should have been his day-to-day -day in the office on cases. And that's how he finds matters. Him and Joe, him by himself, him up with someone from work because they really did mess up certain storylines. I feel like they even messed up like 
Ralph storyline, but that's beside the point. That's how it should have been. Not him constantly acting like he doesn't have a nine to five and just being in Star Labs so that Cisco and Caitlin can have lines because that's all it is. Otherwise, Cisco and Caitlin's function would be obsolete. They would cease to exist. There would be no need for him. The lights in Star Labs would be shut the hell down and there would be no need for those two robots to be there anymore. And I'm not saying I don't like their characters, but because they have never progressed into anything more, it made Barry regress. And that is what destroyed the show number one. That was a long tangent. Number two. Number two. The villains, terrible villains, PG villains, worse than PG because I think, you know, even a 10 year old could come up with better storylines than they come up with. These villains, Eva, oh my gosh, this mirror villain Eva. You know how we ended that? I can't even believe we ended that way. She's just like, oh, you know what? Man, I can't believe I'm so evil. Mate, I was doing the wrong thing. I'm gonna go back to the mirror verse, bye. That's how you end a villain? No, I don't want a villain redemption arc. Even the villains before it, DeVoe, oh, he's supposed to be the smartest thinker. That storyline just kept getting worse and worse, he kept changing faces. The last episode, how he got defeated, with Ralph thinking about food, was so dumb, because the bus matters and all of that. It was ridiculous. Who was the villain for season five? Oh gosh. It was that, um, the serial killer one, right? Yeah, the serial killer one, who, what the hell happened with him? Did he try and reform too? Oh yeah, he tried to reform and then his little niece killed him. <sighs> all these reform villains. Yeah, so all the villains that they've had, they're, they're just really bad. Which brings me to number three. They're so afraid to let shit happen. Killer Frost. She should have been Killer Frost. It should have been a whole Lex Luthor situation. She should have gone evil. It shouldn't have been this whole me Yeah, I'm gonna put these three and four points together because they're gonna merge. I'm gonna talk about their refusal to do shit and then Killer Frost and Caitlyn being shit. Okay, so they won't allow things to happen. Like I said, Star Lab should have died. Cisco should be doing something else completely and entirely. Like. Uh, Barry should have branched out at different times and not just kept season after season sticking to the status quo. Like, he should have had a darker season where he's just like, man, I don't even want to save the city anymore. I don't know if I can do this. Or a season where him and Joe are completely opposite sides of something and it feels like there is like just war with a civil war <laughs> in DC. It could have just been something different every season, but every season everything still stays the same and it's just so frustrating. So with Killer Frost, this whole, oh, they messed up the timeline in season three because he flashpointed. Don't let me even get into how they ruined the flashpoint storyline. They made it one episode. It should have been half of a bloody season. It should have been him in that different world, maybe potentially believing it's true, but then breaking his way out of it. That would have been so fun. It would have been like Earth 2 season two all over again, but they don't like to be great. The show doesn't want to be excellent and I had to accept that a long time ago. But anyway, Caitlyn should have just had an accident and she sort of started to feel all those like frosty powers. She started to feel like she was changing and then delve into darkness. But they refused to let things happen. So now I'm gonna get into um, Killer Frost. Her being a villain would have been so great because she started off good, she was a friend of Barry's and then she has this transformation into being like evil and being against him and they're rivaling one another and the only reason why you can kind of keep her around longer is because the fact that she was a former friend of Barry and Cisco, and so it's difficult to decide what they're gonna do with her since they're not really the type of, you know, hero slash characters that kill people. But no, they really copped out, and I don't know if it's because they don't think Daniel Panabaker has the range, and she doesn't, and I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just gonna like show you like a case in point. Don't make me cry, Harry. This isn't happening again. I'm sorry. I was afraid. Anything we ever shared was real, then please just let him go. Please just let him go. No, 
you know, Daniel Panabaker, she doesn't have the range for that type of stuff, so maybe that was why. But it would have been more interesting. But now what we've got is this nonsense. One minute Caitlyn was so afraid of Killer Frost. I don't want to be Killer Frost. I'll do anything it takes. She even betrayed the team a little bit to get rid of Killer Frost. Then she was like, no, I want to keep Killer Frost. I want to keep Killer Frost. And then it was like, you know what? Killer Frost and her are completely different people. At the end of season three, she was like, I'm not Caitlyn, but I'm not Killer Frost anymore. We start back in season four. They've reversed everything. They reticent her whole storyline. And it's like, actually... Um, I sometimes can be Killer Frost and then Caitlyn comes out. But that wasn't what you said in season three. And then they're like, you know what? Caitlyn has Killer Frost in her head. And instead of fighting against it and not wanting her anymore, now she doesn't want to let go of Killer Frost. Now she's going to betray the team again because she almost gets um, Cynthia killed in order to protect Killer Frost. So different from what you were saying a season ago. And then we've got this whole, oh, Killer Frost was a, uh, what do you bloody call it? Uh, a goddess? What was that nonsense? Uh, and then it's like, now Killer Frost is, lives outside of Caitlyn and they're two separate people. And Killer Frost now wants to redeem herself. She doesn't care that she's done all these bad things. Well, she does care, but she wants, she, they want to move on from her being bad, the baddie that she was. You know, she was involved in like, pretty much slavery if I recall correctly um but they're just like you know what she needs a redemption arc oh she shouldn't be jailed for all these things she wants to be good she's going to be a good person why so now what we're stuck with is this uh, slightly offensive storyline of Killer Frost being a criminal and just getting away with things like literally they had Joe black man Joe stick up for this Karen, this killer Karen, um, like, oh, she's not that bad, whatever he said in that episode that I barely watched, that's not okay, why are they doing that, she commit the crimes, let her face the time, but of course that's not possible. So comments like these baffle me, when all Cisco, Wells, and Team Flash have done is hold Barry back from being excellent, and then comments like these, I mean... <laughs> Do Caitlyn fans care that her story is a steaming pile of crap? Do they care she has no job, no life outside the lab? No. And then there are those fans that do get it. The show is in desperate need of a change. But is that change too late? I potentially think so. I think that's all I've got to say for now. Um, yeah, The Flash is terrible. I think, in all honesty, it might be hard for fans to hear this, but it does need to end. There's nowhere else it's going. There's nowhere else they're going to take it. And the time to really um, pivot was during season four. And they chose not to. They chose to do the same old um, bullshit in a different season. And here we are, season seven. And I literally can't bring myself to really watch it. Like, there's a, and there's a reason I haven't touched on much that happened this season. Because... I start an episode and then I just turn it off.